Hey everybody, Spaceman here with another audio commentary for you. This time I have a game between Stormhoof, who's actually Cash, or at least according to the replay I downloaded, Cash in the southwest corner. And in the northeast corner we have Enti, who's listed as Canny Mommy, but I, I'm told he's Enti. So Enti versus Cash. I believe this was a ladder game, and I'm just going to say, guys, I've had some issues with my audio over the past week. I've been trying to get it set up, but something's not working. So Please forgive me if the audio here is not great. I will get it fixed, but for the time being, I'm just I'm fed up with trying to figure it out. So I'm going to record a replay and post it anyway. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can forgive the poor quality of the audio. Anyway, we'll jump right into this one. We have our undead player. Um, again, it's NT. He's going a crypt zig build, so we're not going to see an immediate death knight harass, which is I think kind of popular from what I've been seeing lately. It seems pretty popular in the meta to go for the Death Knight, immediately build a Relic as well and go out harassing. Maybe that's more popular against Orc though because he is against an Elf and he knows that. Um, and yeah, our Elf player Cash, he's going for a standard build as well. We have the Altar Moonwell, excuse me, and the Ancient of War is over here to Power Creep. Just a little easy green camp. Still expedites it though. Um, and another thing that some players might not recognize, I'm going to point out, when you Ancient of War creep, it's not just about killing the creep camp faster, it's also about ab absorbing damage. So your Demon Hunter is not going to take any damage, your Keeper of the Grove, your Archer, whatever unit you happen to have um, at the time of creeping, will no longer be taking damage. It'll be the Ancient of War, which recovers health for free, as opposed to using mana or sorry, moon wells or mana potions, health potions. Looks like we're going to have the Keeper of the Grove first, as is the current meta from the Elf player. An Archer coming out as well, I'm sure. This will uproot and start power creeping. Our Undead does have his altar up now. Tome of Relic coming a little bit earlier than I would have expected. You know what, I'm also, I apologize. I'm going to turn this down a bit. Turn this up a tiny bit. Hopefully everything sounds fine. I just don't want to hear all the, the right-clicking of rally points that, that we're currently hearing there. Ghoul's coming. No sign of a graveyard, so I don't think we're going to see any Crypt Fiends, at least for the near future. That also probably means we'll be seeing a tech pretty soon. This is, this is actually a very interesting base to me. This Relic is very vulnerable. I'm sure he, he must have known that his opponent wasn't going to come harassing. This is also a very forward zig. If he had come harassing, sorry, if the elf had come harassing, he could have gotten back here with the demon hunter and caused some havoc, and there wouldn't be a Nerubian within range, even if he were to upgrade this one. But because there was no immediate aggression, this didn't actually cause any problems, and the base is now going to be quite strong because he has the option to build his Nerubian at the back or at the front if he wants. Dreadlord first! Very exciting, guys! We're seeing a Dreadlord ghoul game. So maybe we won't see a fast tech, but we'll see a a quick expansion as well, and that's what we're going to see. The Sacrificial Skull is out. And this is a very easy creep camp, especially when you have sleep. Um, getting Treants first, I also haven't discussed that. Definitely makes creeping easier. You absorb damage on the Treants rather than Archers or Keeper of the Grove, which is very similar to the Ancient of War uh, discussion I was having a couple minutes ago. And we see an early Tree of Life, so it looks like we'll see a fast expansion from the Elf as well, although the Undead player is going to be further ahead. Easily creeps this out, going scouting with his Skeleton Warriors. And let's see this, yeah, good damage is going on to the Skeleton, so the Ghouls remain at full health. I don't think we even see a level 2 Dreadlord here, no. And we saw the early Blightstone, but no Ziggurats yet, so that kind of seems like a waste of 50 gold so far. There's no point in having that if, if you're not going to use it. You should build at least one. There it is. There it is. So the 50 gold is not a waste. The elf has scouted out his opponent and is now aware that there's no tech. So I'm sure that he's aware the undead is expanding. And that's where the wisp is going right now. Keeper of the Grove still hasn't even crept this. So he's going to take a, quite a bit longer to actually start getting gold income after he creeps it and then roots his tree and... Entangles the gold mine. I imagine he's already early pr producing these wisps early so that he'll be able to fill it up immediately, but there might be some wisp build time associated with filling up that gold mine as well. It's going to be an easy creep camp for the Dreadlord. He's picked up a circlet of nobility. 
Does he see this? I don't think he sees this. No, they don't see each other. Oh, yes, they do. So nice positioning for the Dreadlord. He's going to be able to scare these archers off. Good timing on the zig. Ooh, he doesn't. Wow, I expected to have Vampiric Aura. I expected him to have Vampiric Aura, but none of that. Carrion Swarm, very early. I like it. Will we see a sleep surround attempt on the Keeper, or is this illusion really scaring him from trying it? There's also no dust on the Dreadlord, so you'd think we'd be seeing some invisibility, but it's not happening. Entangling roots from the Keeper, so we're, no, we're also not seeing any Thorns Aura. Very fascinating. You'd think Thorns Aura would be great against ghouls, although maybe he didn't expect to be against ghouls at the time. Entangling Roots, of course, is, is very strong early game, so it makes sense that he would want to get it at this stage in the game. Easily, easily held by the undead player, though. He's got four Acolytes on gold. There's the fifth, and the tech will probably start immediately after. Our elf player is halfway to tier two. Still hasn't started his expansion, but the tree is getting into position. So we'll keep an eye on gold um, in the gold mines as soon as the tree starts fruiting. Let's see. Still, oh, there's the last accolade. We have a graveyard, a wall of zigs, no necropolis. The tech is starting here, no necropolis. So we're not going to see a teleport to the expansion at any point in the game. That shows the confidence of the undead player in both his map control and his ability to keep <clears throat> keep a in position. I guess it's all map control i'm just rambling on but ghouls and a dreadlord he can maintain like if he creeps here he creeps this if he goes for this creep camp maybe over here he'll be able to quickly get to his base to defend especially with this fairly substantial line of zigs once they get upgraded that will be quite strong okay so like i said we're going to see the build time on the wisps plus the entangled gold mine so still nothing out of that one and we're down to 9,000 on the Undead. So he's 1,000 gold ahead before the expansions even begin. He'll be even a little more than 1,000 gold ahead. Look at that. Level 3, he's finally got Dust, which is good. Just in time for day. Um, Keeper of the Grove. Getting some early Ents again. Lots of Archers. And we are Tier 2, Ancient of Wonders going down. No lore. No wind. We'll probably see a tier two hero come out from the tavern. Panda or a Naga. Ultra Vision, though, is out and improves bows. Both very, very cool upgrades. I like to see those at this stage in the game. Heavy archer production, when you have this many, the 50 gold for improved bows is so worth it, especially if it's going to go into the mid to late game and you're going to continue building archers. You need those improved bows, especially against ghouls as well. Of course, it's the Alchemist. I should have known that. He's much more popular these days, especially with the Keeper. But <clears throat> you can see my uh, my old-fashioned meta coming in when I suggested the Panda, which would have been a Demon Hunter Panda old meta, right? Ooh, a hit from the Elf. I don't think he'll be able to do much damage. This forward Zig is now going to cause quite a few problems because he can't run away very effectively. Nice Carrion Swarm hitting several archers and two treants, but that healing wave is also very effective. Shredder, wrecking though. The, the damage output on a Shredder is easy to underestimate. Nice surround by the Dreadlord. It was a sleep surround, but he's going to force a teleport from the Keeper of the Grove. Maybe suffer one more loss. Do the improved bows do it? No. So a good hold by the Dreadlord. We have Tech to tier 3 on the way. Lots of ghouls who are going to be creeping, we can assume, because the shredder will, should be more than enough if left on it alone. Over here, very safe base. Strange positioning for a graveyard. I guess if he has to defend, though, and he has a rod of necromancy, that'll come in handy. Or if he's going for a necromancer build. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't notice we're seeing dual crypt as well. Let's, let's focus on, on our elf player, though, Cash, for a second. We're going to hit tier 2 on the alchemist here, probably? I think so. Yeah, for sure. Level 4 on the keeper, who has now picked up another town portal. Dryad's on the way. Tier 3 tech on the way. We'll see a transition to bears at some point. Goldmine is under pressure by the undead player. Forces another teleport. And, oh. These don't have ghoul frenzy, so it's not too scary yet. 
where they do a lot of damage to trees or buildings in general. The ghouls have normal damage. And it looks like, wow, this tree of life is going to go down. There's not enough wisps here to keep it alive. A nice carrion swarm on the wisps. Lots of, yeah, it's lost. Lots of ghouls lost, but the expansion goes down. So the elf player got just over a thousand gold out of his gold mine. Whereas the undead has almost taken 3,000 out and it's still running. So this is, at this point in time, I think very much favoring Enti, our undead player. I hope it's pronounced Enti. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it. It's E-N-T-E. -E. I guess it could be Ent or Ente if uh, <laughs> there were an accent on it. This should be a huge creep camp for Cash if he's able to get away with it. And looks like he will. There's no pressure from the undead. Entangling roots doing its job. Ooh, Cadgar's pipe of insight or brilliance aura will be really effective on bears. Great for a keeper of the grove. Great for dryads if they do end up having to use abolish magic. Great for the for the alchemist. So that's a, that's a very big pickup. Oh, look at that! We're seeing a gargoyle transition from Panty Mommy or Enti again, which is. Always exciting. I love seeing good ghoul gargoyle play, especially with Carrion Swarm. We have Boots of Kalphalos. Not great on a Dreadlord, but agility is agility. Death Knight is a second hero. That makes sense. We are tier three now with a Black Citadel and three crypts. No ghoul frenzy yet, I don't think. He's got, oh, he's down to only six ghouls. He lost quite a few when taking out that, that expansion. No statues coming either. Let's check out our food limits. Panty Mommy, 54. So he's broken upkeep, whereas Cash has not. Cash is also getting some really, really good creeping in here. Level 3, 4. Lots of extra armor on the Alchemist. Look at that. Greater Mana Potion, Orb of Venom. Greater Mana Potion and Orb of Venom are both very nice. No Teleport. Ooh, he buys an invulnerability potion as well. So this alchemist is not going down anytime soon. He will have to be aware of, of the sleep surrounds them because he's got no teleport, and that could get very dangerous for the keeper. Book of the Dead, big pickup that he had almost missed before. Expansion is back up. No, no income yet, but Cash is almost back on his feet. Do we see Nature's Blessing? We do, right? I don't think Ents start with five armor. I'm pretty sure... Nature's Blessing has been researched. I'm sorry if I missed that earlier, guys. Let's see. No bears still, just Dryad production. So we're seeing Dryads and Archers against Ghoul Gargoyle with Tri Hero from the Undead. I wonder if he got Sleep or Carrion Swarm. It must be Carrion Swarm. Look at the damage there. He pulls out, so the Death Knight will get this alone. Oh, Lich gets picked off. And now Cash definitely knows where the Undead player is. He's going to finish the level 7 turtle off, no problem. Gets level 2, Claws of Attack plus 9 will be great on the Lich, and forces the Teleport. So a, a little win there for Cash. He's got the superior heroes. Orb of Venom has been transferred over to the Keeper of the Grove. That makes sense, just easier to deal damage. Um, no Teleport on the Undead. Lich is coming out very shortly. Gargoyles. Gargoyles, gargoyles, and an abomination with disease cloud. Very nice. Disease cloud, I think, is underrated. You don't really see the damage adding up, but it really makes a difference. Even just having one abomination or one meat wagon, that, that starts ticking. And it, it spreads really quickly, I always find. No upgrades on gargoyles, no upgrades on ghouls. We do have an orb of corruption on the lich, plus those claws of plus nine. I'm sure will be transferred over shortly. No upgrades on archers or dryads either. Another big creep camp for Cash, and he's going to be creep jacked, but not before he gets the big item, which was. What was the big item? Medallion of Courage. Strength and intelligence on an alchemist is big. Look at that carrion swarm. Uh, lots of damage on the archers, but very strong against dryads. Or sorry, dryads are very strong against carrion swarm, obviously. Rest of the creep camp is easily taken by the undead player. And now we're in an interesting position. I won't, I'm going to pause it for a second. We have 63 of 70 for the elf player versus 69. So a larger army for undead. We have levels 5, 2, 1 versus levels 5, 3. And it's going to be very interesting doing the dryads 
with acid bomb combination on gargoyles. First, I wonder what will win. This will be interesting. Very, very difficult position for the elf player. I think if you just attack move right now, if both players were to do that, um, actually in that case, elf might win. But as soon as the gargoyles start focus fire and dryads, it becomes really difficult for the elf. So let's see how this goes. Ghouls absorbing some damage. Gargoyles flew back and they're coming in. Nice carry and swarm to deal with at least the ends and an archer. <laughs> Healing spray from the alchemist is nice, but these gargoyles have great positions over these trees. It's hard to close the gap. And yeah, NT is forcing the elf player back towards his base, which is an unfortunate direction for the elf to find himself going in. A couple of gargoyles have taken quite a bit of damage, but not enough to... Nope, they're not going to die. Are we still... There's the first statue coming out that... Wow. Well, not the first statue the next statue coming out and our undead player definitely needs it here another engagement ghouls taking the brunt of the initial hits which is exactly what nt wants some nice dryad micro but it doesn't seem to be enough he's not even though he dealt some damage and is going to run away with minimal losses he wasn't able to slow down the undead army at all sleep on the alchemist but very nice staff from the keeper of the grove keeps him alive um, but this is going to be very very difficult to deal with without hippogriffs this army is going to just run over the elf especially with level three carrion swarm archers are the hard counter to gargoyles and destroyers just not going to work against carrion swarm hippogriffs great counter to these at least they'll contend the air against gargoyles it's a really close matchup but carrion swarm carries through there's also no thorns aura from the keeper which is a huge buff to the hippogriffs in a hippogriff gargoyle battle, but we have none of that. Nice healing spray from the alchemist, good heal from the keeper of the grove as well to keep him alive. We have a big engagement, one dryad's going down. Nice heal scroll by the undead player. Wow, the dryads are starting to turn the battle. Gargoyles have to pull back to regroup. Alchemist is staffed out by the keeper of the grove. Another dryad's going down. And that, that fight went pretty well for our elf player, I have to say. Looks like the Ancient of War is going to go down very quickly. Focusing on a Gargoyle versus a Dryad. Let's see. Dryad goes down. Gargoyle goes down. Dryad goes down. Nice healing spray from the Keeper of the Grove. Uh, Keeper of the Grove. Alchemist again. Dryads are forced back, though. Statues are doing their thing. This one Alchemist is making a huge diff. Alchemist. I keep misspeaking. I apologize, guys. This one... Abomination is going to absorb so much damage. He's going to be such a pain in the ass. Spread disease cloud to all these dryads. And once he does that, this pull and push maneuver that that uh, Cash keeps doing is not going to be as effective because they're going to slowly lose, lose health. Lich stays alive. A nice death coil and absorbing damage from the dryads with the heroes, which is a great play. Some micro attempts on the gargoyles, which are focusing the wrong units right now. The gargoyles are, are being microed back, but they're not focus firing down dryads, and they're starting to get picked apart. We need some focus fire from these dryads, not on the heroes. Oh, but that coil carrion swarm. Oh, look, he's got the invulnerability potion, but it doesn't even matter. He's arrogant enough that he doesn't have to use it. Nice block attempts from the abomination. Not going to do it. Um, this is starting to look really, really poor for storm hoop or cash because this expansion is going to go down i don't think there's anything you can do about it carrion swarm oh gets the the ones just as they jump out of the gold mine as well expansion down are we gonna see no nope, there's no destroyers left nice look at that nuke on the keeper of the grove though coil carrion swarm keeper of the grove goes down we're gonna see some dryads or some gargoyles start taking damage. This healing spray is massive. I love the change to alchemist. I love that healing spray is good and doesn't heal your opponent. It's a great change. Abomination being microed back. Only three gargoyles remaining, but the undead nuke is strong, and there's only an alchemist now to deal with. Three heroes and two abominations. Lots of dryads. Looks like there might be another abomination picked off. I'd, what are we now? Two abominations, yeah. And that's the game. So at the end of it, the undead player takes it down, Enti. Um, 
So I'm impressive micro. I apologize. I definitely stumbled over my words multiple times in that one. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the replay, I hope the audio quality is good enough. I hope my voice sounds okay. Let me guys know what you think. I'm happy to make any changes and I'm going to continue working with the <clears throat> excuse me, the settings of my, my recording studio because this is it's a little bit frustrating. Recording studio. I mean the, the software I use to record. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Very much appreciated. Questions, comments, criticisms are always welcome. I will respond to anything. If you could like the video, I'd appreciate it. If you could subscribe, I'd appreciate it even more. Regardless, have a great rest of your day.